Hi, everybody. My name is Zara Patel, and I am a physician and surgeon here in California, Northern California. And I have been asked to gather COVID data and present it for my home institution. And I figured if I was doing it for them, that this could also be really helpful for all of you out there, uh, because lots of people have questions and the data moves really quickly and the numbers change really fast. And so uh, since I'm collecting it anyway, I figured I'd put it out there for you. So let me go ahead and start sharing this presentation that I've put together with you. And you can see that I gathered this data and presented it yesterday. So it's a, a day late, but it's pretty up to date. And these are the highlights of the presentation that cases around the world, uh, South America and South Africa are overall decreasing, but Cuba, the Middle East are rising. And certainly cases here in the United States, as many of you know, and in California are also rising. Unfortunately, this also means that hospitalizations in the US and California are rising. This does come with a little uptick in vaccination rate, which is great. We're now giving 0.69 million doses on a daily basis in the US. And in California, 63% of the population is fully vaccinated. Mortality is slightly increasing again in the US overall and in California. So let's start from the top. When you compare the United States with the rest of the world, about a month ago, we were doing better. We were around fifth place, but now you can see that Western Europe has started doing a lot better and we're slowly dropping down that list, but we're still holding right in the middle there at about 49% of our full population fully vaccinated. You can see that this means about 166 million people are fully vaccinated in the US. And in the age group over 65, we're actually doing really well. We have 80% vaccinated, but in the age groups that are lower, we're not doing as well. And of course, um, younger than 12, we are not allowed to vaccinate yet, but hopefully soon. And then when you look at administered doses, you can see that there is this slow, stable rise um, that's taken place over the last month, but our peak, let me move this a bit, our peak was at 3.3 million a day back in April. So we have a ways to go to get back to that rate. You can see that at this pace, the projection for 90% of the population being fully vaccinated is in March of this coming year, which is actually much better than a month ago, which was all the way out to July. So the more people that get vaccinated, the faster rate of vaccination, obviously the sooner we can pull this date in towards us. When you look at the overall map of vaccine dose per 100,000 in a population or state, you can see that unfortunately in the Southeast, we still have some states that are very low um, vaccination rate, but I've put little stars on these states surrounding that area that have had some significant increases in vaccination just over the last two weeks, which is really encouraging. And here you can see in California, our daily rate of vaccination, 91,000, so uh, 0.91 million per week. And again, there's a slow steady rise, but we could do better. Here in Santa Clara County, you can see that 80% of the entire population over age 16 is vaccinated, which is a really good rate. Uh, we should now reach out and try to encourage other counties around us and keep going until our, our county is fully vaccinated. You can see that in the age group over 65, we're kind of on par with the US, but the rest of California has a little bit of work to do to catch up with that. When we look at cases on a global scale, we just crossed the 200 million case number, which is a staggering number and really difficult for anyone to wrap their head around. But uh, this has translated into over 4 million deaths from COVID, which uh, is really what we want to prevent. When you look at the continued rise of global cases, you can see that compared to the surges that we've had before, we really are on a steady rise up and we have not reached our peak yet, unfortunately, of this third surge here. You can see when you compare the US to the EU, about two weeks to a month ago, we were both matched at this steady rise, but the EU has been able to turn this around. And this is largely because of their increased vaccination rate compared to the US. So they definitely have been doing a much better job than us in the last two weeks. When you look overall at the entire map overall as a world, 
you can see these really dark spots or the spots to worry about that the pandemic is kind of raging out of control, really increasing in number. You can see that's happening in Cuba. You can see that's happening in Armenia, Libya, uh, Western Europe, Middle East, these areas. And of course the US uh, has changed to a darker red than it was a month ago. Here you can see on this map that line from Cuba with this really sharp steady rise up as opposed to these lines from the United Kingdom and from Spain, which have thankfully turned the corner and turned down. When you look at the United States a little bit lower, uh, we don't have as high of numbers, but we definitely are still on a steady rise upwards. When you look at cases nationally, of course, this is reflected uh, similarly. The last seven day average was 96,000 cases. And, uh, you know, when you look backwards, that means we have far outstripped the first and second surges that we experienced as a nation. And we are on a trajectory to uh, match that third surge if we don't do something different soon. When you look at the map of hotspots of activity of COVID-19, about a month ago, this was centered in Missouri and Arkansas. Now you can see this bloom that has occurred that's really affecting Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida, but also kind of a general spreading outwards to all the states surrounding Texas. Uh, and you can see these mountain Western states are now being affected, some bright spots there, Northern Oregon in particular, and Alaska all have these bright spots happening at this point. When you look at California cases, you can see that we also are rising. And when you look back, we're basically at the same level that we were in July a year ago. So right at that you know, first surge during the summer of last year, we're at around the same numbers now overall as a state. When you look at Santa Clara County, we also are kind of right where we were in July of a year ago, but nowhere near the numbers that we saw in January of this year. When you look at San Mateo, very similarly, you can see that peak down low um, is very close to where we were in July of last year, but nowhere near our peak surge in January of this year. I want to talk a little bit about variants because people are concerned about them and have heard a lot of different things. You can see that this kind of uh, stretch in the middle of medium orange is all Delta. We are over 90% Delta variant now in the United States. It is so good at uh, spreading that it has really pushed the alpha variant uh, and the gamma variants really almost off the, the chart completely. And interestingly, if you look at this chart, the darker orange down low at the bottom is also a Delta variant. You can see over here, this equals AY.3, just another type of Delta variant, but not the Delta plus variant, which I will touch on in a moment. Here you can see that uh, in another type of graph where really when you look at the sequencing of these viruses and these cases, 95% of cases at this point are that Delta variant. When you look at California, you can see that over the last two weeks, we really jumped from having only 50% Delta variant in our population to over 70% Delta variant. So definitely uh, picking up the pace with that here. And this is a, a little chart plot from the New York Times, which many of you probably have already seen. And I think it does a good job of showing the transmissibility, the contagiousness of Delta variant compared to the original version of coronavirus, and also compared to Ebola virus, smallpox, which the Delta variant is more transmissible than both of those. And it's about the same contagiousness as chickenpox. So if you can remember from back when you were a child or when you have children, how contagious chickenpox is, that's how contagious the Delta variant is. This is some data. We, you know, we are always collecting more data and uh, science is really based on a continual processing of new data that's coming in. Early data suggests that vaccine breakthrough cases may be as transmissible as unvaccinated cases. And so a lot of people are worried about this because Delta infections have also been associated with a higher viral load and duration of shedding compared to the prior um, sort of uh, type of COVID-19 that we had before. And some studies suggest that it may cause more severe disease than those ancestral strains. But this is the key point. And that's that even though someone who's vaccinated may be able to catch the Delta variant, you can see here that the hospitalization incidence 
and the incidence of death is just much, much, much lower. You can see a 25 fold reduction in hospitalization and death if you have been vaccinated versus if you are unvaccinated. So it's really a pandemic of unvaccinated people at this point who are coming to the hospitals and having really severe infection. I will you know, make a point and I think I thank Bob uh, Wachter for putting these out on social media because I think it really does make a really nice point here that uh, as we have more hospitalizations, as the numbers rise again in the US, because we have more of our population vaccinated and because older age groups are by and large the most vaccinated, Unfortunately, they are still the most susceptible and vulnerable to hospitalization and death. And so we will see higher numbers of vaccinated people being hospitalized because they are vulnerable, this population. And that's why uh, if more of the population could get vaccinated, it would really help. Here is the uh, sort of who graph of the variants of concern and the variants of interest. You can see a lot of the Greek alphabet has already been used here to describe these variants. Of course, the Delta variant has been the variant of concern lately, but in the media over the last two weeks, there has also been some chatter over a couple of different variants that are not on the slide. And so I did want to just touch on those as well. So the Lambda variant, if any of you have heard of that, uh, maybe this is a new variant of interest. Now you can see that out of all the countries, Peru has actually been hit the most hard by COVID-19. And the Lambda variant comprises 82% of all COVID-19 infections in Peru. This is the country with the highest mortality rate in the world from COVID-19 deaths. However, Peru also has some challenges with incident reporting. They also have very overcrowded housing overall, and they only have a 4% vaccination rate. So these factors by and large are much more likely to be impacting their mortality rate versus anything in particular about the Lambda variant. And the latest uh, sort of statement from the WHO, the World Health Organization, is really that we don't have enough data at this point to compare the Lambda variant to Gamma or Delta or any of the other variants at this time, and we simply need more data to do that. The Delta Plus variant, many of you have heard about lately, and this is really just a sublineage of the Delta variant, and it's adding just one more mutation, one from a prior mutation variant, which is the Beta variant, and this may make it more contagious. And it's been found in several countries, including the US. And interestingly, here in Santa Clara County, there have been 46 cases reported of the Delta Plus variant. So something that we should just keep an eye on and see how this compares to the original Delta and to Alpha and other ancestral strains of COVID. When we look at hospitalizations in the United States, you can see that we do have a persistent rise and um, as of a few days ago, uh, 50, over 50,000 uh, hospitalizations in the US. When you look at particularly in California, you can see that this is also persistently rising. Our hospitalization numbers and ICU numbers have jumped a bit over the last month and something that we need to pay attention to in order to protect our citizens and our healthcare workers. When you look at Santa Clara hospitalizations, we're still at a relatively low level, thankfully, but we are increasing. So again, something to pay attention to. And San Mateo also overall a very low COVID census in their hospital, but rising. When you look at San Francisco hospitalizations, this is significantly increasing. You can see here that total hospitalizations uh, a few days back were at 97 and intensive care unit beds were at 28. You can see when you compare this to prior surges, we're right at where we were at our prior um, first and second surges. When you look at overall Bay Area hospitalizations, this is also significantly increasing. When we look at mortality overall, unfortunately, this is also increasing. So, um, you know, the last seven day average was 439 deaths per day overall as a nation. And when you look at California, unfortunately, this is also rising slightly. I think overall, as a country and as the world understands better how to treat COVID-19 and we develop more therapies and treatment options, that's why we're not going to see mortality rise as much as it did before in prior surges. But we also know that mortality always lags a little bit behind hospitalization rate 
And so we're just going to have to keep an eye on this to see where it plays out. I'll leave you on a bright spot, and that's here in Santa Clara County. We have really only had two deaths from COVID-19 over the last two weeks, so we're holding pretty steady, and this is great news. So with that, I'll stop sharing my screen, and I hope that that was helpful for everyone. If you have any questions, uh, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Zara Patel underscore MD. And if you'd like to see more updates like this, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'm going to post this. All right. See you all.